So, how to replace a hard drive in a netbook or a laptop. Before you replace the hard drive, you need to have a way to copy everything onto your new hard drive, like your operating system, programs, apps, and all your data, movies, pictures, documents, or whatever. So, your options are to clone the drive that is in your laptop or notebook with software like Norton Ghost or a free version like Clonezilla but they do take a bit of understanding not much but if you don't want to learn how to use the programs then there is an easier way an easier option and that is make an image of your hard drive and the best way of doing that is to make a systems image so in your Windows 8, 7 or Vista, there is a tool or utility installed which will make a systems image. And there is a video link below this video to show you how to do that. And it's pretty easy. So once you've made your systems image, you will then be ready to replace the hard drive. And in this video, I will show you how to replace a netbook hard drive. The model I am using for this demo is a Samsung NP-N110, which is fairly similar to the NC10. Now, if you are replacing a hard drive in a laptop as opposed to a netbook, replacing the hard drive is easier because there is access to the hard drive on the side or the bottom of the laptop. But with netbooks, you have to remove the bottom cover by removing all the screws and then peeling the back off. Also, some netbooks have access to the hard drive by removing the keyboard. But the best way of finding out is to check the manual of the, the, the netbook or by going online and checking on the company's website. Of course, you can also check on YouTube. So let's begin with this netbook, which I said is a Samsung N110. Now, just let me explain why I'm um, replacing the hard drive on this laptop. It was built in 2009, but lately it's beginning to click. The hard drive inside is just giving a little click. Not, uh, not very noticeable, it's, it's very subtle. It'll click maybe once every three or four minutes, but that's a sign that your hard drive is dying. And another sign that your hard drive is dying is opening applications can be slow, sluggish to open, and they can take a cup, up to 30 seconds to open. So there's another sign. Another sign would be a lot of um, hard drive light activity while your while your laptop is uh, sitting idle you'll see a little light here on the front of your uh, netbook or laptop and it'll be flashing constantly that's another sign but th th this laptop is is used every day and it's been used since I bought it in 2009 and it's now 2013 so it's four years old and it has done a lot of work. They're a very good machine actually, these uh, Samsung's uh, N110s. In order to replace the hard drive, you have to remove the back of this laptop. So, and this is the, the back of it here. And there's a whole load of screws in it. There's one, two, three, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen screws to be removed. Now the first thing you do when you replace the laptop, when you replace a hard drive is or you're you're removing screws or doing anything with a laptop or an, a netbook is to remove the battery. And there's two little slider clips here to unlock the battery. I don't know if can, you can see that. So you'll see a little red dot if it's open. 
and then you just hold the other one the other side the opposite side you just hold this guy and then just pull up the battery okay and then that's the battery removed now the next job is to remove all the screws you will need a Phillips small Phillips screwdriver for this this is a fairly good one it has a magnet on the top of it so they make it easier to remove the screws so I'll start removing the screws now it doesn't matter where you start oh, one more thing before I go into uh, removing the screws it's a good idea to map out where the screws are because sometimes the screws can be longer or shorter in their different positions so this screw here could be uh, shorter than this one here and uh, same with the, the, the other screws as well some of them can be shorter or longer now I know that all the screws are the same length in this laptop but uh, in this net netbook but it, in a laptop there will be s certain differences and there will be differences in other netbooks as well so just be aware of that so what I do is I mark out where all the screws are on a piece of paper so I just mark out and put the screws beside the and then I just leave that aside. Okay, we'll just do that now. just leave enough space between them so that you can see where they are okay so we'll go back to removing the screws now so then I just take that screw and then I put it where it is on the piece of paper it just makes it handy so that you don't get them mixed up Now some of them can be very tight in their, uh, you know, their, their, um, there's a torque put into these screws when they're put in first, so these are never removed, so some of them can be stubborn enough to come out. Just to move that piece of paper then out of the way. One there that I missed. Now this this is the hardest part now. Peeling off the bottom of the netbook. I will go through it very slowly and deliberately so you will be able to see exactly what I'm doing and I'll show you where to start. So first thing you do is you take away the memory using a flathead screwdriver here as well. and remove 
the memory. So there's two little clips on the side and you just push away from both and, and then the memory just pops up like so. And then just pull it out. Again, leave that safe. You don't want that getting damaged. Yeah, there's a little SD um, slot here as well in the front of it, and just um, it just pulls out. So just make sure that, that is removed as well. Okay, this guy. can see that and then what you do is you start here at one corner from the top you see that this is the lid here you just close the lid down and start on either this corner or this corner at the bottom and you can use your nails so it just kind of prizes out nice and kind of don't force it And you can use a screwdriver or, or a, a plastic ruler or a little um, plastic uh, hard hardened plastic and that's what I'm going to use here with this it doesn't damage the, the plastic thing you think the screwdriver uh, would and you just run along the corners now Inevitably, you probably will crack a little bit of it taking it off because they're, they're, they're just so tight. Uh, these uh, little clips that they have on them, like the old Nokia phones. And then when you get to this corner here, there's a little um, side clip. It's very hard to get at. You can see it there opening. I'll just zoom in there for you. So there's a little gap and you can put the, the screw the screw flathead screwdriver in between it and then get your nail and you'll hear pop. Here pop. Okay, yeah. and the next spot then is along the back. I can show you that there. So along this guy here, you'll see it on the laptop on the on the on the. You just run the screwdriver on the little plastic guy along. And you'll hear pop. And this is a good place to use the you hear that click and run it on again. You hear another click. You run it on again. You click again, that's it. So there's just four clicks at the back, four clips keep it in place there and then you run along the other side the other corner let's zoom out again now so so I don't know if you can see that my lighting isn't the best here Take your flathead screwdriver again. You'll hear it click, hopefully. And 
the same problem then in this corner. You can see it there. So we have to kind of help it along its way. They're the two very important corners. Is the, is the the back of the where the um, the laptop screen meets the meets the back of the laptop. So these these are the hinges here, and there's extra strength here in them, and they the, the, the put extra clips in there so that to keep them from being removed. I, I presume. Now we have all the clips out and it'll just come up out of it there now. Like so. Okay. And that's what the back of it looks like. Just leave that to one side. And then you have access to the hard drive. So there's your hard drive. Now there's one little screw here. I'll zoom in again so you can see that. You can see it there. And then you just pull it out with this guy here in that direction. So I'll remove that screw now. Again, keep that screw safe as well, and don't forget to put it back in. Just put it over there for the time being. Now, with the screw removed, nice and nice and gently. Now, there's no need for it just pops out. Okay. Now, that's the hard drive. Two and a half inch Seagate hard drive. It's a momentous, uh, the speed of it is 5,400 turns per minute. So now we're going to replace this hard drive with a solid state drive, Samson 840 series SSD. They're a lot faster. There's no moving parts in it. And it's a great hard drive to replacing this guy here because it'd be six to ten times faster. It's a huge difference when you when you see it running. They're about a hundred and seventy euros. That would be something short of two hundred dollars. Well, it'd be a hundred and. 80, 85 dollars maybe, 190. So that's what we're going to replace it with now. To, to replace this this hair dryer it has a cover, has a steel cover around it. It's a shield for shielding it. And there's a, a plastic covering then on the inside of that to protect the hair dryer. So there's two screws in it, one there and one there. And both of those have to be removed and then you can just take out the, the hard drive out of the sleeve okay so we'll just take them out now again don't forget to put them back in when you put in the new drive turn it over and then you'll see the other screw and that's it there They're fairly tight too, um, but they don't have to be that tight. All you're doing is basically holding it in place, and then it just comes out of its case, 
like so. So that's the hair drive there. The one that was clicking on me every three or four minutes, meaning it's coming close to end of life. Now, there's the hair drive, the Seagate hair drive that we've taken out. And um, it was clicking every four, three or four minutes. So I know that it's nearing end of life. And we can replace it with a drive of the same, a momentous again. Maybe one with a slightly faster speed than this one. This one is 5,400 revs per minute. Um, you can also get a hybrid, which has some solid state on it. I think it's four or eight gigs usually on them. And um, they make a huge difference. They make them as fast as these fully solid state drives, which are a lot more expensive. A lot. There, that one is uh, 170 euros and um, they are they, they don't last any longer than these guys you get a three year warranty with it as it states on the box I don't know if you can see that three year limited warranty so it's these have um, dropped down to uh, three years as well uh, some of them have gone to two years warranty so a hybrid of this guy which basically a hybrid is it's it has the disc but it also has some solid state on it like this guy but it only has eight gigs of it and what it does is it stores all your important programs on that 8 gigs of um, solid state. So it doesn't have to be going into the actual um, disk to pick up the information to send it to your RAM so that you can view your programs. And use your programs. Um, so that, that's, the, um, that's the drive. So we're replacing that one. And I'm going to put in this solid state drive and you just pop it into this um, sleeve same as same way that the the other one the the disc drive was in it just slightly thinner you might be fooled by them they are um, a lot thinner than I don't know if you can see that they're about a third the thickness of this guy so and it's a way lighter and uh, as I said they don't last any longer than the the these drives but they give you a serious speed difference like a six gigabytes per second as opposed to I'm not sure now what this one is But they're supposed to be 10 times faster anyway, so. The details, I use them in um, desktops and they're very quick. The seconds for a program to open up and all that kind of crap. So to put it in, you just slip it in, back in, and just line it up with the holes that's in them. And then you put your screws back in. And you have to make sure that this guy, that the Samson sign, is stick facing out for, away from the shielding. Okay, might be different in, in a different type of netbook, but uh, you get the idea. You'll know what way the other drive came out. Just make note of where these two guys are. And make sure that they line up with uh, this guy here. And then you just um, put your screws in. So you have one here, one there. Let's zoom in on this. So you have one there. And one goes in there. So we'll screw them in now.
just get your screwdriver. And just uh, make sure that they're snug. And then the opposite corner, this one here, just turn it around, put it in there. And then all you do is you line up your uh, screw hole with this guy here. Let me zoom in and show you that now. So you take your drive and you just uh, pop it in. slips into place. You'll know when you have it in right on anyway because you'll see these little pads at the side which will show you uh, and you'll see that the screw hole lines up as well. Okay it's not a um, it's not rocket science or anything like that and you just get your screw and put that guy in here. Again, just nice and snug, don't over tighten. And then you just come along and put the back back on. And this lead here kind of uh, lines up with this guy here. So we just put it back on. And, uh, and zoom out so you can see that. make sure the cables are sitting fairly close to the board when you put it on don't have them sticking out here <laughs> and then it just clicks into place and you come along and you hear the clicking up along the side can be difficult enough to get this one right because uh, because of all the um, stuff that's in the way on this side, so just be careful of that. But you will get it. It's not. Uh, it's not too difficult. You can run along the front, same way. And the opposite side. Sorry, that was kind of off screen there. Make sure that these little lads at the back are tight and snug as well. Yeah, and once you have it um, fairly close, to, don't worry about it if it's kind of sitting open. You know, there's a slight little opening here. But once you put in the screws, that'll pull it in. Okay. And all you do is put the screws back in. Now, one more thing I want to say to you. <coughs> now I put 
the screws back in and then I'll explain uh, the, the external hard drive for making a systems image. So we'll start here at this corner. We have our piece of paper with our screws on top of it there. So I know exactly where every screw came out of. Just again, nice and snug, don't go crazy with the screwdriver. Just just until they're tight, you know, you don't have to overdo them. 